Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. We give honor unto Christ, who is our life. We thank God for this day, this opportunity just to magnify his name. The hour has come for us to start our Wednesday night Bible study. We're going to open up with prayer, followed by scriptures for every day. Then we're going to read the seven works of grace and go into our Bible study lesson. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just want to say thank you as we magnify your name. Because you alone are worthy and there is none other besides thee. We thank you, Father God, for just keeping us today from all hurt, harm, and danger. We thank you, Lord God, for speaking to us today by your Holy Spirit. For giving us, Lord God, all that we need today, Lord God. Lacking nothing, Father God, but an overflow, Lord God, of your blessing of your knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. We thank you, Father God, for just supplying all of our needs according to your riches and glory. And we just thank you in advance, Father God, for what you're going to do. Lord God, we just say thank you, Lord God, because it's already done, Lord God. We're just waiting on the manifestation. Oh God, it's already done, and we just say thank you. Lord God, we just say thank you tonight, Lord God, because you alone are worthy. You alone are holy. You alone are faithful. Oh God, God, and we just say thank you on tonight, Father God, as we lift our hands unto you, Father God, in submission, Father God, we just say thank you, oh God, we say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Father God, for rejuvenating, Lord God, refreshing, oh God, encouraging, Father God, strengthening, Father God, the body of Christ as a whole, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh Lord God, we thank you, and we bless your holy and wonderful name. Name. We ask these things of the Father in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Scriptures for every day, wisdom and knowledge belongs to you. Colossians 1, 9 through 10. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding that ye might walk worthy of the Lord into all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Ephesians, the first chapter, verse 17 through verse 18, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Isaiah 11 and 2, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Be filled with God's fullness. Ephesians 3, 17 through 19, That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Colossians, the second chapter, verse 8 through verse 10. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelt all the fullness of the Godhead body, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Acts 1 and 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Expect a move of God suddenly. Romans 8 and 11. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal, natural, earthly bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Please note, this is talking about your body that you have now, not the one you're going to receive one day in heaven. Allow the Lord to impart his life into you by placing faith in his word. Begin to praise him for this promise. The seven works of grace, your bill of rights in Christ. Repentance is atonement and sorrow. Conversion, transform, changed. Justification, validation, legalization. Sanctification, consecration, purification. 
Baptism of the Holy Spirit is the beginning. Redemption, liberation, deliverance, and freedom, perfection, excellence, and faultlessness. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Once again, we honor Christ who is our life. We honor Apostle and Pastor Allen for being here. Praise God. On our last Wednesday of the year, we're going to go into part two of Alpha and Omega. For the past couple of weeks, we have been talking about God watching over his word, God watching over his covenant promises, and last week we began to talk about Alpha and Omega, him being the beginning and the end. And tonight we're going to do part two, looking at some examples in the Old Testament as well as in the New Testament. We're going to look at work, where God gives us instructions. He gives us a work. He invites us to do a work. He gives us a promise. He is Alpha and Omega. He is going to be with you from the beginning until the end that you complete whatever he tells you to do. If he said he's going to heal your body, he is going to be with you from the time he gave you that word until the time of the manifestation of that healing that takes place. If he made you a promise, he is going to be with you from the moment he releases that promise until that promise is fulfilled. If he gave you an assignment to do, he is going to be with you from the time he gave you that assignment until that assignment is fulfilled. In the Old Testament, we're going to take a look at two important individuals, which is David and Solomon. You will find me to begin with over in First Chronicles, the 28th chapter. From beginning to end, last week we looked at Noah and we looked at Abraham. We also began to talk about Paul. Tonight we want to look at David and Solomon. First Chronicles 28, I'm going to start at the first verse and then I'm going to move there out. And David assembled all the princes of Israel, the princes of the tribes, and the captains of the companies that ministered to the king by course, and the captain over the thousands, and captains over the hundreds, and the stewards over all the substance and possession of the king and of his sons with the officers and with the mighty men and with all the valiant men unto Jerusalem. Then David the king stood up upon his feet and said, Hear me, my brethren and my people. As for me, I had in mine heart to build a house of rest for the ark of the covenant of the Lord and for the footstool of our God and had made ready for the building. But God said unto me, Thou shalt not build a house for my name, because thou hast been a man of war, and hast shed blood. Howbeit the Lord God of Israel chose me before all the house of my father to be king over Israel forever. For he hath chosen Judah to be the ruler, and of the house of Judah, the house of my father, and among the sons of my father, he liked me to make me king over all Israel. And of all my sons, for the Lord hath given me many sons, he hath chosen Solomon my son to sit upon the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. And he said unto me, Solomon thy son, he shall build my house and my courts, for I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father. Moreover, I will establish his kingdom forever, if he be constant to do my commandments and my judgments as at this day. Now I'm going to go down to the, tenth, uh, to the ninth verse. And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the Lord, the God of my father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind, for the Lord searcheth all hearts and understanding all the imaginations of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. Take heed now, for the Lord hath chosen thee to build a house for the sanctuary 
Be strong and do it. Verse 11 says, Then David gave to Solomon his son the pattern of the porch and of the houses thereof, and of the treasures thereof, and of the upper chambers thereof, and of the inner parlors thereof, and of the place of the mercy seat. I wanted to read that because God gave David a promise concerning his son and a building of the house of the Lord. And Solomon, when we get over to Second Chronicles, the first chapter, what we're going to find is that Solomon set himself in agreement with what God said. Whenever God says anything to us, he is Alpha and Omega, and we must find ourselves in agreement with what God said. So when he says it to us, we believe it by faith. And then we begin to move in obedience. Whenever we want to really see the hand of God move, and do what he said that he's going to do through us, then we must find ourselves in agreement with what he said. Now, if I don't agree with him, then why should I honor him? I cannot honor him if I don't have faith. I cannot honor him if I am disobedient. And so I must set myself in agreement with what he said. God said his word will never return unto him void. It will accomplish that which he sent it out to do. And so if I am disobedient, he's still going to do what he said he's going to do. His word will never return unto him void. If I lack in faith and if I don't move in obedience, he'll raise up another. But his word will be accomplished. As I began to study Solomon, I said he set himself in agreement with a promise. Because he understands that God is Alpha and Omega. His father said to him, God is going to be with you throughout this entire process. That's something we got to take into an account too. So I'm just going to read over in 1 Chronicles 28, 20, and then I'm going to go to 2 Chronicles. Verse 20 says, And David said to Solomon his son, Be strong and of good courage and do it. Fear not nor be dismayed, for the Lord God, even my God, will be with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee, until thou hast finished all the work for the service of the house of the Lord. That's Alpha and Omega. That's Alpha and Omega. He's going to be with you until you complete that assignment. He's going to be with you no matter what it is from beginning to end. Our job is to trust him. Our job is to move in faith. And yes, he faced some obstacles. Solomon had to be anointed for the second time as king. But God had already told David who was going to sit on that throne. So God can give you a word and listen. Hell can come up against you, but it will not prevail. Somebody might try to step in your place and say it's mine, but God said it belongs to you. The gates of hell will not prevail against you. So we just have to hold to what God said. Have faith in what he said. I know what he said to me. I believe it by faith. I'm not moved. I, I won't bend. Listen, I might get, he said, get angry, but sin not. But you have to hold to what God said. God said it and that sells it. And we have to remind ourselves of that. We have to cast down thoughts and imaginations that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. So any thought that comes to your mind after God gave you a promise, the enemy is going to fight against that promise. And he's going to tell you, you know what, it's just not going to happen. You can get a million and one no's, but if God told you yes, you stand on yes. And while you're standing on your yes, you prepare for what he said is going to take place. Yeah. So even though David had a desire to build a house for the Lord, the Holy Spirit guided him to write the patterns, the architect part of the pattern of the house. And so he moved by the Holy Spirit. So he was a part of the plan. And he had to pass it on to his son. And he told his son, God is going to be with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will not fail you until you have finished all, listen, all the work. So you were ordained from the beginning of time to do a work. We just have to catch up to what that work is. 
And until you take your last breath, God is going to be with you. As long as you move by faith and as long as you move in obedience, God is right there every step of the way. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. He didn't say it was, it's not going to be formed. He said it will not prosper. And every tongue that rise up against you in judgment, thou shalt condemn. That is the inheritance of the saints, says the Lord. So along your journey, God is right there. You just have to keep working because remember who is on your side. If God be for you, who can be against you? And the only thing that is going to separate me from the love of Christ is my lack of faith and if I move in disobedience. So let nothing separate you from the love of Christ. Just know that he is always there. Through every obstacle. Listen, one thing we do have to understand is this right here is that Satan wants to fight against the ministry. He has a plot and a plan. He wants to cause any, any kind of friction against what God said. But he is no match for God. He's no match for God. So whose report are we going to believe? God gave you a work. I don't care what it looked like. Be encouraged. Be ye steadfast in the work of the Lord. You show up. And listen, it's how we show up. We show up in faith. We show up in joy. We show up in peace. We show up in, in juvenation. We show up in the authority of the Holy Spirit, God in our steps. And guess what? That's what God is looking for. God is looking for a vessel that says, here am I, send me. He is yeah. looking for somebody that says, you know what? God, you told me to do it. It don't look like it's going to work out, but I'm going to go forth anyway. I'm going to go ahead on anyway. There is that song that says, Hallelujah, anyhow. Yes. Hallelujah, anyhow. Now let's take a look over at 2 Chronicles. I want to go into the first chapter. Because I was, as I was reading this, the Holy Spirit began to let me know that this is what we have to do. We have to set ourselves in agreement with the promise of God. Second Chronicles, first chapter, beginning at the very first verse, it says, And Solomon, the son of David, was strengthened in his kingdom, and the Lord his God was with him and magnified him exceedingly. Then Solomon spake unto all Israel, to the captains of thousands and of hundreds, and to the judges, and to every governor in all Israel, the chief of the fathers. So Solomon and all the congregation with him went to the high place that was at Gibeon, for there was a tabernacle of the congregation of God, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, had made in the wilderness. But the ark of God had David brought up from kerjath Jerim to the place that David had prepared for it. For he had pitched a tent for it at Jerusalem. Moreover, the brazen altar that Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Ur, had made, he put before the tabernacle of the Lord, and Solomon and the congregation sought unto it. They were seeking the Lord. Yes, yes. They were seeking the Lord. During those times for the tabernacle, they, they went to the tabernacle. We, we are now the tabernacle. We have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. We can go to the throne for ourselves today. But we come together to assemble to seek the Lord our God unisonly. We're supposed to come together to unify in faith to seek the Lord. When we come together, something happens when we come together and to magnify the Lord together on one accord. Not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Verse 6 says, And Solomon went up the either to the brazen altar before the Lord, which was at the tabernacle of the congregation, and offered a thousand burnt offerings upon it. Now, we don't do our sacrifice that way now, but we offer sacrifice of praise. We, sacri we, we give him, uh, we sacrifice and we honor him through our worship, through reading of the word, through prayer, by submitting ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is our reasonable service. We honor him in our faith. We honor him in our obedience. We honor him in song. Mm -hmm. And when they did this, something happened. Hallelujah. When you honor God, something happens. Mm -hmm. 
not with lift service, but with an obedient heart. Yeah. Verse 7 says, in that night, so it didn't happen too far away. Mm -hmm. That same night, mm -hmm. did God appear unto Solomon and said unto him, ask what I shall give thee. Mm -hmm. Now I know normally when we read this particular chapter, we jump straight to verse 10. But this time the Holy Spirit had me to stop. Verse 8 says, And Solomon said unto God, Thou hast showed great mercy unto David my father, and hast made me to reign in his stead. Now here it is in verse 9. Now, O Lord God, let thy promise unto David my father be established. Here at this point, Solomon is saying, I set myself in agreement with your promise. I agree with what you said. You said that you would put me on the throne and that you would establish it through me forever. You, my God, I set myself in agreement with you. That's what we have to do. Because I believe what you said. I know my father said it, but now I establish that I agree with what you said. So how about us? Are we agreeing with what God said to us? Or are we looking at circumstances and saying, I don't know. I don't know. That's that's a little hard. And it's it's not a, it's not a here and thou type thing. It's a every day, all day. I can't be in some days and some days I want to back up. I can't be half timing and half stepping. It's all in or nothing. I have to take the whole word of God or I don't take none of the word of God. I need all of it. Either I'm going to trust him or I'm not going to trust him. Either I'm going to have faith or I'm not going to have faith. Either I'm going to believe that he is with me from the beginning until the end of time or I'm not going to believe it. I cannot second guess God. I can't get halfway into an assignment or in a journey and say I don't know God you still there he's already said I'll be with you even till the end of time and he's not going to renege on his word sometimes it may feel as if you are all alone but you're never alone you might have to walk alone physically but you always have the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit with you you are never alone never alone he even gave his angels charge over you mm -hmm. yeah. to keep you in all your ways. Mm -hmm. So you're never alone. Mm -hmm. But the enemy will tell you you're alone by yourself. Oh, yeah. But remember, we have to go back and say, oh, no, I'm not alone. I have Jesus Christ who is my Savior. I have access to the Father, and I have the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I am never alone. Never alone. And so here, verse 9, Solomon set himself in agreement with the promise of God. That's what we have to do. It says, for thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this thy people that is so great? Who can do this great of a job? Nobody. Because God looks at the heart of man. And God created all of us. So who knows better than to govern and lead God's people than the one who created them? So we're talking about Alpha and Omega tonight. And we know that this house was builded and dedicated. Remember the word. Until you finish this work, God is going to be with you. So I say to each and every one of us tonight, whatever God promised you, what, and you have to know that you know that you know that God said it, and whenever he gives us a word, it's going to line up with his word. If you're having a dream, a vision, somebody come and give you a word, you hear something. If I hear something that's not in my vocabulary, I, I say to the Holy Spirit, take me to the word. Because if, he, if he's saying something to me, it's going to line up with his word. Amen. It has to line up with his word. Now, if it don't line up with what has been written, I won't know part of it. Amen. But here he said, I, I'm Alpha and Omega. And if you look over your life, God has taken you through some things. He was with you in the beginning. It didn't feel like he was there. Amen. In the middle, it didn't feel like he was there. But you got through it. Amen. You survived. 
you overcame. It, it might have been worse than what you thought it was going to be. The enemy thought to kill you and to knock you out. The enemy thought to shut you down completely. You might have had to give up some things, but to God be the glory, it turned around for your good because he is Alpha and Omega. Some things he said you had to let go so that I could bless you with better. Because I'm Alpha and Omega. He said that your latter shall be greater than your former. So sometimes we're not going to understand the process. But when we say, God, I don't understand, but I trust you. I trust you with all my heart. He tells us what to do over in Proverbs 3 and 5. He says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. And all your ways acknowledge him and I will direct your paths. So guess what I got to do? I got to set myself in agreement with that word. I got to say, you know what? It don't feel good, but I'm going to trust you because you said that you will direct me in all my paths. I don't understand it, but I'm going to trust you because you told me don't lean unto my own understanding. You said in all my ways, I have to acknowledge you. So God, guess what? I don't understand this or what I think I understand. Guess what? It don't measure up to what you want to do because you've already told me that my thoughts are not your thoughts, that they are as high as the heavens are above the earth. You already told me that. You already said it. You said that it, it pleased you to talk to me. It pleased you to say those things just for me. So I trust you. I'm going to trust you with my whole heart. Mm -hmm. So look at those things that the enemy is trying to come up against you that are negative. Mm -hmm. That are contrary to what he has said and say, God, I trust you. I know it may not look good, but I'm going to trust God. You know why? Because he said that it's going to turn around for my good. Mm -hmm. It's going to turn around for my good yeah. because I love him. Because I'm called according to his purpose. Amen. It's going to turn around just for me. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Now as I look at Second Chronicles, the 6th chapter. Beginning at the 10th verse. We're looking at fulfillment. It took some time oh, yeah. for this building. Mm -hmm. Somebody else tried to be king. Not only that, but Solomon found favor in the sight of those who work with his father. When I tell you God is going to provide the provision for the vision, all we got to do is get to work. All you got to do is show up. God gave you a job to do. All you got to do is show up. As you show up to go to work, God is going to provide the provision. It's his vision anyway. The vision belongs to God. So over in 2 Chronicles 6 and 10, it says, The Lord therefore hath performed his word. Come on, Holy Spirit. The Lord therefore hath performed his word that he hath spoken. Mm -hmm. He performed his word. Let God do it. Amen. I'm just a willing vessel. I'm just here to say, here am I. Send me. I'm submitting myself. I want clean hands and a pure heart. I don't know what to say until I get there. Yeah. He just say, show up. Sure. He told Elijah the prophet, he said, go show yourself to Ahab mm -hmm. and I'll release the rain upon the earth. Mm -hmm. At that point, that's all he had to do was show up. The rest belongs to God. So by faith and obedience, Elijah showed himself to King Ahab. It belongs to God. So whatever God is telling you to do, if he's telling you to go, go. Yeah, yeah. If he's saying, I got a word I want you to give, well, I'm waiting on you to give me your word. If he's saying, I want you to pray and intercede, I'm waiting on you to tell me what to pray about. I'm waiting on you to show me what you want me to see. I am waiting on you because it all belongs to you. This thing started in the beginning with you, and it is going to end with you. I am just a partaker of your plan. That's all I am. I'm just a part of your plan. And he's looking to and fro upon the earth to say, who can I trust? Who can I send? 
Who can I call upon? Who's going to trust me enough to know that I will never leave them nor forsake them? Look at the life of the children of Israel. In all their disobedience, God never left them, nor did he forsake them. When they turned their back on him, he sent judges to fight on their behalf. He sent prophets to warn them. He never left them, even in captivity. He said, even in your captivity, I want you to build. I want you to multiply. I want you to grow so that when I gather you back to myself, you won't come out empty. So he's never going to leave you nor forsake you. He's going to be with you even until the, t the end of time. Verse 10 again says, The Lord therefore hath performed his word that he hath spoken. For I am risen up in the room of David my father and am set on the throne of Israel as the Lord promised. And have built the house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And in it I have put the ark. Wherein is the covenant of the Lord that he made with the children of Israel. That right there is enough to just rejuvenate you. To encourage you in your faith. To say you know what God you are the same yesterday, today and forevermore. And I know by the hands of God. Look back over you. Just look back over the, the last time God told you to do something. And you moved in obedience. And you saw somebody's life change. You saw somebody come to Christ. Somebody gave you a testimony that they were healed, delivered, and set free because he is Alpha and Omega. Every time he gives you an assignment, it is at the beginning, and he's going to see you through until the end. Each and every time. Each and every time. Every day. He hasn't stopped being the beginning and the end. He has never stopped. And so we have to look at it by, by case, by case, by case. That's why scripture also says that the race is not given to the swift nor to the strong, but to the one who endures until the end, to the end of that thing. You got to endure to the end of that thing. And when we throw in the towel midway, guess what? We got to start all over again. Sometimes we, 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 we get to a place that we ought to get tired of a cycle and a circle and of starting over and that test. Listen, I'm tired of this test right here. So if you're tired of that test, why not go ahead and just trust God and do it his way? Hallelujah. God, what's your plan? Because I've tried it my way. And my way, listen, every time I do it my way, I'm no longer in the same spot, but I'm pushed back even further yes, yes. because I keep doing it my way. Mm -hmm. But if I do it your way, I will pro be projected mm -hmm. and my territory is enlarged yeah. when I do it your way. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. But I have to get to a point that I said, I trust you. Mm -hmm. Does it happen overnight? No. It grows with your faith. It comes through the experiences of your faith. And so every time something arises in your life, it's th that's what God wants to do at that precise moment. When it comes up to the surface, that's what God wants to deal with you at. Because he wants to prove himself to you. He wants you to trust him. He ain't going to leave you. He ain't going to leave you. Now, that's our Old Testament example. And so I begin to say, well, God, who are we going to look at in the New Testament? And at first, you know, we always go to Paul and Peter. But we're going to look at Jesus. We're going to look at our Lord and Savior. Over in Matthews, the first chapter. Now... Traditionally, on the 25th, we acknowledged that they say that's the birth of Jesus. But every day, we honor him. 
Matthew's the first chapter beginning at the 18th verse says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Okay? That is the beginning. Now, I want to, I'm going to go over to John as we build this line by line, precept by precept, what Jesus came to do. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Are you saved tonight? Yeah. Fulfilling of his promise, right? He fulfilled that. When we get over to John, the 14th chapter, I'm looking at fulfillment. John 14, as he began to talk to his disciples, verse 1 says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, <laughs> ye know, and the way ye know. So when I looked at this, I said, okay, Holy Spirit, We're talking about the resurrection. He came into the world for a purpose. And he did ministry. He had disciples. He then anointed and appointed them to be apostles. Then he appointed another 70. And he gave them an assignment to do. He said, go and make disciples of in all the earth. At the last supper, he knew who would betray him. He knew who was scared. He knew who would run. But he also told him he was going back to be with his father, right? And it was fulfilled. So over in the book of Acts, Starting at verse 9, chapter 1, verse 9. I'm looking at Alpha and Omega. I'm looking at fulfillment. It says, And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Because he said, <laughs> I'm going back. I'm going back. I'm in Acts, the first chapter, ninth verse. I'm going back. I only came down here for a season. I only came down here for a work, but I'm going to prepare a place for you. So I went back to my father. Verse 9 says, and when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, ye men of Galilee. Why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, listen to this, this is so good, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So he's going to come back. He's coming back, but for a ready church. And in the meantime, what are we doing? In the meantime, 
we should be preparing to go back with him. There is a work he needs done on earth. And the way God's work is done on earth is through you and I, through willing vessels. That's how it's done. But if I won't move, he said the rocks will cry out. He got a jackass to speak. When the prophet eyes were blinded and could not see. <clears throat> and so I'm going to say this again because I want to drive this home. What has God told you to do? What has he put in your spirit to do? What are you running from? Because God's will, it's going to be done. I, I, I don't want you to get to that day and you stand before him. Because we've been talking about judgment. God watching over his word. I don't want you to get to that day and all the things God invited you to. You decline, 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 decline. And he said, depart from me. I never knew you. What did you do with my word? We're to be hearers of the word, but not just hearers, but doer of the work of the word. Some won't do a work out of fear. Mm -hmm. I just came by to tell you, God has not given you the spirit of fear, yeah. but of love and of power yeah. and of a sound mind. Yeah. He has given you spiritual ability. He yeah. has given you spiritual authority. He has given you the power of the Holy Spirit to move in a realm that the enemy cannot trace. Because you got some work to do. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, you were ordained as such. When are we going to catch up to that work? Some already know that work. Some already know that call. But oh, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm scared. I, I don't know. I don't. You don't have. God didn't give you the spirit of fear. That's that's a plot of the enemy. And it's not you anyway. It's not you. It's God. It's not even you that they reject. Scripture says that when they reject the prophet in the word that he gives them to say, they're not rejecting the prophet. They're not rejecting the teacher. They're not rejecting the, the one who's bringing the word. There's not, they're not rejecting them. They're rejecting God. It's not your word anyway. It's God's word. Somebody might say, well, that life is too hard. It's only hard if you want it to be hard. Amen. Amen. But if you want to be kept, he'll keep you. Amen. Yes, sir. If you want to be kept. Thank you, God. That means if you want some help. Mm -hmm. Because he knows everybody's heart. Yes. He knows our weaknesses. He knows our strengths. Oh, yeah. And whatever area you're struggling in, God, I'm struggling in that area. Hallelujah. And he'll help you. That's why he's Alpha and Omega. <laughs> he wants to see you get to eternal life. He okay. said, I went away to prepare a place just for you. Yes. It's only for you. Mm -hmm. But you have to agree with what I said. Yes. Yes. And everything that I've done that is written, mm -hmm. that I'm doing now, mm -hmm. is for your good. Because I have good thoughts. Yes. I have good plans. Yes. I got good thoughts towards yes. you. Yes. For a good and expected end. Thank Listen, you. it was it was because of God that they went into captivity. Mm -hmm. yes. He put them under a ruler of a, of a king who would not kill them. Mm -hmm. Now, yes, Babylon got in trouble mm -hmm. because they mishandled God's people. Yes. But God scattered them there mm -hmm. because of their disobedience. Mm -hmm. But he preserved them. Yes, yes. Even in captivity, he had some prophets there. Mm -hmm. Even in captivity, Ooh. he had Ezra preparing to teach them when they came out of captivity. Mm -hmm. When he says, I am with you, mm -hmm. even until the end of time, yes. you may go through some hell. Hey. You may go through some trials and tribulations. We all are. Oh, yeah. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Mm -hmm. But the Lord, mm -hmm. the Lord, 
He gonna deliver you out of all of that. All of it. Hallelujah. All of it. Yes. So I want you to think about that. Hallelujah. Think about that, really. Thank God for Jesus. God, mm -hmm. am I really trusting you? Mm -hmm. Am I really, really trusting you? If I'm really going to trust you, that means that I can't entertain any and everything. Yeah, yeah. If I'm really going to trust you, mm -hmm. I'm going to bridle my tongue. Yes. I want everything within me to line up with the will of God. Mm -hmm. If I'm really, really going to trust you, mm -hmm. I have to say that my yay is yay. Yes. I agree with what you said. Mm -hmm. I agree with the promises of God. I agree that you love me. I agree that you want me set free. I agree that you want the chains of bondage of sin broken and destroyed from my life. I agree. I agree that you want me to make disciples. I agree that you want me to do it in love. Until we all come into the unity of faith. Yes. I agree that with loving kindness have you drawn thee. Mm -hmm. I agree with what you said. Yes. I agree that I must line up mm -hmm. with your will. Yes. I agree that I must lay aside every weight. Mm -hmm. I agree that I must put aside the lust of the flesh. Mm -hmm. I agree that I must take on the fruit of the Spirit. Oh, yeah. I agree that I must let the Holy Spirit lead and guide me. Yeah. I agree with your way. Your way I agree with that. Amen. And when we put ourselves in agreement with God, we're going to see the manifestation oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, of healing, yeah. of Thank delivering. God. Yeah. Of someone's heart being converted and changed. Oh, yeah. If someone's mind being renewed, mm -hmm. we're to be supposed to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. I agree with that. What does that mean? All things are passed away. I got to put off the old man. Mm -hmm. I got to walk in the new man. In the new I set myself in agreement that beholding you, I am a new creature. Yes, yes. I set myself in agreement with that. That I am cleansed by the word. That as I take in the word of God, I am cleansed. I set myself in agreement that my sins have been forgiven. I set myself in agreement with 2 Chronicles 7.14. Set yourself in agreement with the word of God. Don't fight the word. Agree with the word. It goes down sweet. But when it gets down there, it's bitter. Because that bitterness has to kill off some stuff. Yes. So when I look, and I'm now going to go to 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Because this is the response to Solomon's request. The sixth chapter in 2 Chronicles is all about Solomon set things in order for the house of God. And God responded. It says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Now, if I set myself in agreement with that, then something's going to happen. Here's what happens. Then will I hear from heaven. So I have to agree with doing this. It's a contract. All a covenant is, is a contract. You go out and buy something and you have to have a contract. There were terms and conditions for that contract. If you don't hold up your end, you got to turn some stuff in. You're going to lose it. If they don't hold up their end, mm -hmm. you might get it for free. Yeah, yeah. But God has already laid out mm -hmm. his part of the covenant, Amen. his part of the contract, yeah. his obligations. Mm -hmm. And when you pay in full, come on now, come on. you got to pay it in full though. Amen. So if my people, mm -hmm. which are called by my name, mm -hmm. 
shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. It don't stop there. Now mine eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. For now have I chosen and sanctified this house. Yes. When you do that, mm -hmm. he's talking to you. Okay. It's a personal thing. Yes. And imagine if a group of us got together mm -hmm. who are called by his name God, will humble themselves, yes. pray and seek his face. Yes. You know what will happen when we get together? Mm -hmm. Based off of those terms, in the unity of the spirit of faith. Yes. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. He can hear from heaven. Hear from heaven. Yeah. I can respond to what you're asking for. Mm -hmm. I can hear you. Yes. And will forgive your sin. Mm -hmm. And will heal your land. Yeah. And his eyes will be open. And his ears attend. Unto the prayer. I want him to hear my prayers. Thank God. Amen. I want him to hear from heaven. Hallelujah. I want him to respond to me. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. It's a beautiful thing when you know God hear you mm -hmm. and he respond mm -hmm. that you can say, oh God, I know you heard me pray and it showed up. Showed up. Because I set myself in agreement with your word. Yes. And the only way I can set myself in agreement with your word is I got to read it. I got to read it for myself. Yes. And so I'm telling you to read the word of God for yourself. Don't read take it. my word for it. Read it. It's in the book. But read it for yourself. Hallelujah. Can you trust God? Yes, you can. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You get up. God wake you up. Mm -hmm. It's not the alarm clock. Amen. It, it's, listen, it's the Holy Spirit. Yeah. yeah. That shake you and wake you. Mm -hmm. That get you up. Yeah. Don't take it for granted. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So don't trust the alarm clock. Yeah. Okay. But God keep waking you up. Mm -hmm. For a purpose. Yeah. Yes. Don't even trust in your own knowledge and ability. Mm -hmm. Because the things that we understand and comprehend. God gave us that. Yeah. I was thinking just the other day. I said God. I know it's you that give me wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Mm -hmm. That you can drop something in my spirit. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, where does this come from? Mm -hmm. I ain't study this. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I didn't study this. Mm -hmm. But he said, Solomon agreed with me. He agreed with the promise. Oh, yeah. He trusted me. Mm -hmm. He grew up and was groomed as a king. Oh. He saw what his father did and did not do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He even knew of the story of his father and his mother. Yeah. Yeah. But Solomon said, you made a promise. <laughs> you made a promise. Oh. <laughs> Establish it. Because mm -hmm. I agree with what you yeah. say it. And because he agreed with what God said, he stayed focused on building that house. Yes, he, did. Yes, he, did. he did it. He stayed focused. Yeah. He even wrote a letter. Solomon wrote a letter to his father's counterparts and to ask for certain things. That's over in 2 Chronicles, the second chapter. And the man responded, I'm just going to read this to you. Second Chronicles 2 and 12, Horam said, Moreover, blessed be the, God, the Lord God of Israel that made heaven and earth who have given to David the king a wise son and do with prudence and understanding that might build a house for the Lord and a house for his kingdom. So he acknowledged that yes, he could have got all those plans that his dad gave him, 
all the money because David invited the people to give towards the building. Solomon could have got all of that and messed it up. He could have got all of that and messed it up. But he believed that this was his assignment and he, wo he moved and he went forward. And he did what he was supposed to do. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm encouraged tonight. Oh, yes. My faith is encouraged tonight to say, yeah. you know what? Look at all that God put in his hand, and he didn't mess it up. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. What God has placed in your spirit to do, it is bigger than you. Bigger than you. Amen. Oh, yeah. yeah. But don't mess nothing up. Stay focused on what he told you to do. Stay focused. Because he is with you until the end. He is Alpha and he is Omega. And that's for everything. Everything. Everything he tells you to do. He's going to be with you until the end. It's towards a bigger thing. It's towards your life in heavenly places. Yes. And if you can think about he went to prepare a place for me and he's going to come back and get me and all I got to do is believe him by faith and walk in obedience. And when you get there, looking at you, looking at your name in the book of life, and you can walk in your mansion because you were obedient, you believed God. Hallelujah. Thank you. You believed him. Mm -hmm. Thank God. And if when doubt tries to come in, push it out, cast it out. Yeah. Uh-uh. No, no, no. God told me to do this. God, I don't care who come and tell you to do something else. God told you to do it. It don't have to make sense to them. It ain't going to make sense to you. But when God told you to do something, you do it and do it to the best of your ability. Yes. Do it in the spirit of excellence. Yes. Yes. Give God your 100%. Mm. Thank you, Lord. And remember, it, it ain't your vision anyway. Mm -hmm. You just a vessel he's using. Hallelujah. That's our Bible study for tonight. God. Praise God. I pray that you got something. Yes. Praise the Lord. On tonight, he is Alpha and Omega. I pray that you are encouraged Amen. to keep doing what God has called you to do. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank do we have any questions or anything before we have prayer? Thank God. Praise the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just say thank you. We thank you once again for who you are, for being Alpha and Omega. We thank you for encouraging our hearts to let us know that you are with us throughout whatever you called us to do. Yes. Oh, God, and I thank you for strengthening, thank Lord you, God, God, for encouragement, Lord oh. God. I thank you for growing us in our mm -hmm. faith. I thank you that tonight we're adding to our faith, Father thank God, you. in the mighty name of mm -hmm. Jesus. And we bind up every spirit that's yes. not like yes. you. We cast down every thought and every imagination mm -hmm. that exalt itself yes. against the knowledge of God. We bind the hands of thank the you. enemy that wants to frustrate, mm -hmm. that wants to agitate and yes. aggravate the work of the Lord. Victory is on our side, Father Amen. God. In the mighty name Amen. of Jesus, we will continue Amen. to do the work that you have called us to do. Yes. In the mighty name of Amen. Jesus, I speak a blessing upon your people, you, God. Father God. I thank you for supplying all of their needs Amen. according Amen. to your riches and glory. Amen. I thank you for an increase of Amen. knowledge, wisdom, and understanding you, after Amen. the knowledge of Christ. And I thank you, Lord God, for healing right now. Amen. In in the mighty name of Jesus, Hallelujah. in the body of Holy Christ, God. oh God, God, upon Holy the earth, Hallelujah. I thank you right now, God, for healing, Lord God, spiritually, mentally, Hallelujah. emotionally, physically, Hallelujah. Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Hallelujah. I thank you and I bless your thank holy you, name because you are worthy. I ask all of these things of the Hallelujah. Father in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Do you have any